There's been a shift in the realm of entertainment. Classic characters thought to have been dead and forgotten are being thrown together and What is the tea? The girls are fighting! No! <laughs> we're getting well thought out revivals and collaborations, but also we're getting these quick clickbaity revival attempts that resemble a nostalgic zombie outbreak. So it's starting to look like Courage the Cowardly Dog out here. All these weird, unbelievable things keep popping up out of nowhere. It seems that aging network studios like Nickelodeon and Cartoon Network are desperately trying to keep our attention. The ones who literally grew up watching them at the same time they were growing their channels, the millennials. For one, there's been an obvious increase in the universe crossover content. And you could probably blame this on the success of the Marvel Cinematic Universe and Super Smash Brothers. As most of us know by now, the MCU has even crazier multiverse crossover madness on the way, as they've been teasing us with all these possibilities. Was that, was that the song we were jamming out to in 2016? And of course, Smash Brothers now has a fighting roster that no one would have believed five years ago. Stuff like this gets a lot of people talking, and Nickelodeon has swiftly joined this trend by putting out a video game resembling Smash Brothers called Nickelodeon All-Stars Brawl. Now, interestingly enough, Nickelodeon has recently announced that they'll be expanding on this cartoon crossover universe idea by coming out with another video game called Portal Chasers. The demographic is more for children who still watch Nick these days, but it still has some of the old school Nick tunes making an appearance. And apparently Portal Chasers is also influenced heavily by other games, just like All-Stars Brawl is. It seems to have references to Among Us and has some of the Among Us inspired mini games. With this and the All-Stars Brawl game, Nickelodeon has solidified their cartoon universe. This is the name they actually gave it. Very unique, right? Very unique. But let's get back to Nickelodeon All-Stars Brawl. Now, I've actually done my research. Oh. Well, oh, first, the positive. Certain characters like SpongeBob and Sandy Cheeks, I had fun playing as. And the four player mode was actually pretty fun. I give the game overall a fun blockbuster rental. And I used to love renting games from Blockbuster, so that's a compliment. However, it's still an obvious knockoff to Super Smash Brothers. I don't mind that this exists. I figured some video game company would make a knockoff Smash game at some point, but my only question is, what took so long? Smash Brothers has been popular for 20 years. Happy feet. Happy feet. Combo. Why is it just now getting a knockoff fighting game? And why so suddenly? It goes back to the universe crossover trend that's going on. And Nickelodeon is jumping onto this bandwagon as if its whole future depended on it. And oops, I think it does. This is actually a great way for Nick and its cartoons to stay relevant, but while evolving their content, they've come off as kind of unpolished, at least with All-Stars Brawl. Fortunately, Nick has made a good choice to double down on this cartoon universe idea, and they have room to grow. It has a lot of potential, I think, just like with the first Smash Brothers game. <laughs> Nickelodeon and the game developer that they used for All-Stars Brawl could get together and spend some money to get some voice actors and some more sound effects and make a huge update to the game. And it'll make it that much better. And this is actually very likely to happen. But Nick needs this new universe approach, not only to stay relevant with their young fans, but to their older ones as well. They need to work in nostalgia to this new ever-changing media around us. Also, they don't have a choice. They can either adapt or die, like everything else. They have a tight grip on SpongeBob, but the future of shows like Avatar and the Rugrats, flagship shows that really connects Nick with the millennials, are gonna have a new home on Paramount Plus and will have less and less to do with the current Nick platform. Nick isn't the only one jumping on the fighting game crossover trend. We also have our friends Warner Brothers allegedly making a multiverse fighting game. Information was leaked about its production and apparently it's been in the works since before All-Stars Brawl was even announced. 
The studio involved with development, NetherRealm Games, have worked with Warner Brothers on the Mortal Kombat and Injustice games. The characters confirmed seem to include Shaggy from Scooby-Doo, Tom and Jerry, Johnny Bravo, and even Gandalf the Grey. Considering how many characters actually fall underneath the Warner Brothers umbrella, the possibilities are kind of endless. It really sounds like something out of a dumb dream, but there's actually a fair amount of questionable screenshots to back it up. It's even rumored to have Rick Sanchez himself as one of the fighters on this game. Outside the leaks, little is known, but this crossover trend has definitely gotten a lot stronger and more obvious. Get over here. And the only real point to this seems to be for entertainment, relevancy, nostalgia, and shock appeal. Warner Brothers and Sister Dot is keeping Adult Swim and Cartoon Network's legacy alive. And this multiverse game is just another reason why. Now, Adult Swim has been trying to stay afloat more than ever since several executives retired and they lost the airing rights to Family Guy. So it seems they're as desperate as ever to get some attention from their millennial and up fan base while trying to go viral by today's standards. Adult Swim used to be really creative. They came into existence reviving old Hanna-Barbera cartoons like Space Ghost and Birdman, making these new unique shows for them in a way that entertained the adults while appeasing the nostalgia of the old Hanna-Barbera fans. She just I'm no Fred Flintstone, but I'm gonna make your bed rock. And they had anime blocks playing stuff like Cowboy Bebop for all the kitties who didn't have a bedtime and couldn't relate to anything else that was being played on that channel. Adult Swim was doing revivals and shock humor in the best way through the 2000s. But we've come a long way since Cartoon Network's heyday, and now, as we kick off the 2020s, we're getting something new, but also something very, very strange. Learning with Pibby. Like something straight out of a bad dream, Adult Swim uses shock value to tease a new cartoon that they might expand on in the future. It features these corrupted, zombified versions of old cartoons that aired on Cartoon Network during its better days. They're kind of making their own cartoon universe crossover thing here, but unlike with Nickelodeon, it's not exactly kid-friendly. There's a lot of on-the-nose symbolism here, it seems, like with the corruption of youth and innocence, but the meta-ness it appears to have is pretty interesting too, as the main character is a children's cartoon in a dangerous adult cartoon world Quiet. Quiet. but i'm still not a big fan of this decision that those swim made to get the attention of their old fans like they literally just decided to throw up cartoon network nostalgia at us in these empty cartoon shells it's actually a pretty lazy way to revive characters and reach a wider audience that's why i would call this pibby thing zombie nostalgia Nickelodeon also participates in zombie nostalgia, too, unfortunately. Only because lately, you see them throwing in these old 90s characters, randomly, out of context. Like, what the hell is Nigel Thornberry doing here? He doesn't even have a decent move set. Smashing, Jape. Terribly clever. But it seems like these resurrected characters have no soul. They have, there's no voice acting, and there's no actual revival to be seen out of any of these networks. It's just nostalgia vomit. Why can't Adult Swim just create a new show featuring an old 90s character, like they did with 70s Hanna-Barbera characters? I'd say it's simply because Adult Swim is not the same thing it was 20 years ago. It's not run by the same people. You could also kind of blame this whole younger generation, millennials and Gen Z. We grew up with the internet. Weird memes and viral videos, our minds have been messed up from all the things that we've seen, and we've just gotten numb to a lot of the craziness out here. It takes a lot to scare people in trend online these days. So I can't be surprised that Adult Swim would pull Pibby out of their ass just to get a response. Although the Pibby idea has some potential, I don't know if I can get behind something that was so obviously made for shock appeal and clickbait. You can't just vomit nostalgia at people and expect them to be on board with your idea. Nostalgia is not a substitute for an actual story. I don't think OG Adult Swim would approve of this, but at least we still have the Warner Brothers and HBO Max acting as the true successors to Cartoon Network and Adult Swim. So while the old networks are making strange and bold choices with their revival efforts, newer streaming services like Netflix are making bold revivals as well but they're doing it in a good way. 
Netflix has this live action Cowboy Bebop series coming out soon. And given their latest trailer for it, it looks like they're doing everything right. Modern live action adaptations have a bad reputation since they tend to not live up to the fans' expectations of what a realistic adaptation should be like. But it seems like the live action curse might be getting lifted with the help of this Bebop adaptation. There's also that Avatar series in development, but Netflix seems to be pretty confident with it since it hasn't already been canceled, since the Avatar creators themselves already left the project and started their own. Regarding live action revivals, you can even say that the success of Warner Brothers shows Riverdale and Sabrina is an example of this because the characters are based on Archie comic book characters from like the 50s and now they're staying relevant. So there's already been some well-made live action revivals in recent years. Maybe the studios are learning from their previous mistakes. But they're getting pretty bold and cocky with it too. Like apparently Netflix is doing a live action Yu Yu Hakusho due for 2023 and even a live action Gundam at some point. With the rise of decent live action nostalgia, there's also a rise in questionable zombie nostalgia and universe crossovers. This all looks good for the future of entertainment, but I'm sure we'll see some bad come out of it as well. And at the end of the day, we can blame Smash Brothers. The MCU, our numbness for horror and shock, our short attention span, and even the fact that millennials are out here writing and directing things now. Our childhood friends Nick and Cartoon Network have been trying to adapt and grow with us while Netflix has been trying to be our new BFF. And Warner Brothers has just been kind of watching everything and pointing and laughing. It's gonna be like the good, the bad, and the ugly out here with Shaggy coming in with the ability to dodge bullets. Okay, well hit me up if you wanna play some Nintendo All-Stars Brawl. I'm maining Sandy Cheeks apparently. So come at me if you dare, or better yet, just like and subscribe to my videos. Thanks.